Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our series called Labs. In the previous videos, we talked about beta-2 microglobulin, methemoglobin, putum cytology, lactic acid, lactate dehydrogenase. We talked about uric acid in the blood and in the urine. In the previous video, we talked about chloride in the blood, but today we're talking about chloride in the urine. You gotta watch the previous video before this one. Otherwise, this video is not gonna make sense to you but if you have watched my previous video on serum chloride then this one will make you happy because learning is fun please watch the videos in this playlist in order let's start with some basic chemistry because doctors suck at it chlorine versus chloride chlorine is cl2 chloride is a negative anion cl negative what's the technical term for this diatomic molecule because it's a molecule made of two chlorides and since the two chlorides are identical it's mononuclear because it's just only one type the technical name for this is a negative ion or anion which will be attracted to the anode which is the positive pole or the positive electrode does this have any charges no therefore it's not gonna attract sodium or be attracted to sodium but look at this does it have a charge absolutely therefore it is attracted to sodium chlorine is toxic this is what you use to clean your pool it is toxic to the bacteria you will not find chlorine in the human body you'll only find chloride the ionized one so if my doctor said to me quote medicosis i'm worried about your serum chlorine level it is 92. i will use my patellar tendon reflex aka knee jerk reaction to kick that doctor in the testicles metaphorically speaking because there is no chlorine in my body there is only chloride moreover what was the chlorine number you said 92 well still boohoo no big deal you only care about hypochloremia when it drops below 80 but but the chart here says that the normal reference rate who cares use your brain i don't have any symptoms and all of my other labs are fine so chances are this chloride level is not significant chloride is an electrolyte what does that mean electro means electrical light means decomposition which means these are molecules that can be decomposed into positive charges and negative charges look at that that's an anion which means it's an electrolyte separation via electricity to remember the serum chloride level just remember my rule of fours what's the normal sodium in the blood 140 how about chloride just 104 bicarbonate 24 ph 7.4 potassium phosphate albumin around four how about the thyroid stimulating hormone tsh 0.4 until four this is to just memorize the labs if you want to understand the clinical significance just remember sodium and remember that chloride is always following sodium like father like son whatever happens to sodium is usually the same thing that's happening to chloride since it's a negative charge it has an important role in your body which is to maintain electroneutrality. If you add a positive ion to the body, you gotta add another negative ion to the body to balance it out. Normal serum chloride level for adults ranges between 98 to 106 milli equivalents per liter or millimole per liter. And this is Le Système International d'Unité, the international system of units. It's the millimole per liter. Don't worry too much about these numbers, just memorize 104. But how about the urine chloride? The urine chloride has a wider range and it's usually higher than the serum chloride. Because remember that your metabolism secretes acids. Who's gonna take care of these acids and get rid of them? The kidney will. When the kidney gets rid of the acid, remember the titration of the ammonia story. You get NH3 plus the H, which is the proton, the acid, lump them together. Now we have NH4 positive. NH4 positive will attract the negative chloride. Before you know it, you have NH4Cl and then you dump that compound into the urine. That's why we have tons of chloride in the urine and that's normal. If you want to learn more about this ammonium story and the titratable acidity, download my kidney physiology course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Quick note on urine chloride. These numbers are the reference ranges for adults. For children and infants, it's way lower than this. For children, the normal range is between 15 and 40 millimole per day. For infants, it's 2 to 10 millimole per day. Chloride is an anion. 
most abundant in the extracellular fluid or the intracellular fluid extracellular fluid it's more abundant outside the cell than inside remember when i told you before anything that's inside the cell starts with p potassium proteins phosphate magnesium which is in the supernova all of these p's are more abundant inside the cell anything else is more abundant outside including chloride and since sodium is more abundant outside the cell chloride gotta follow sodium why is sodium more abundant outside the cell and potassium more abundant inside the cell you should say thank you to your sodium potassium pump which pumps sodium to the outside and potassium to the inside and then chloride is gonna follow sodium to the outside chloride not chlorine is the major anion in the extracellular fluid normal serum chloride is around 104 milli equivalent per liter or millimoles per liter chloride level usually follows sodium like father like son chloride follows sodium do we have some exceptions yes we do have some exceptions in the acid base disturbances in which case chloride is usually related not to sodium but to bicarbonate and if you studied your physiology carefully you will recall the chloride shift phenomenon in which chloride goes against not sodium here but bicarbonate bicarbonate in chloride out and vice versa bicarbonate out chloride in negative for negative hashtag electro neutrality chloride is important in metabolism and acid base balance chloride is excreted by your kidney but if i have kidney failure what's going to happen chloride will pile up in the blood hyperchloremia it will exceed the normal reference range so it will be above 106 but that's just on paper clinically speaking for us to worry about hyperchloremia it's got to exceed 115 milli equivalents per liter do you remember how GABA works do you remember benzodiazepines barbiturates alcohol they work by stimulating the GABA and the GABA works with chloride once chloride which is negative enters your neuron now you have a negative inside your neuron which causes not depolarization but the opposite hyperpolarization not activation mm -mm, the opposite inactivation of your neurons that's why these are what sedatives and hypnotics they will calm down your soul but they can kill you especially these two right here it's the dose that makes the poison do you remember tetany oh yeah we have muscle spasms carpal spasms pedal spasms laryngeal spasms positive chauvistic and rousseau sign yeah what's the cause usually hypocalcemia yes but don't forget hypomagnesemia and also hypochloremia as causes for tetany you'll need to open your physiology book and review the chloride shift phenomena because it's very important remember that the normal serum chloride concentration is how much around 104 milli equivalent per liter that's a concentration which means it's the number or mass of particles that we have over the volume of fluid but what if i'm dehydrated what do you think is going to happen to the volume the volume goes down therefore what's going to happen to the entire ratio it will go up and your serum chloride concentration will go up hashtag hyperchloremia so one of the common causes of hyperchloremia is dehydration it's also a common cause of hypernatremia, but not hyperkalemia for reasons that we'll discuss later. And for the Gisillian's time, I always remind you not to confuse dehydration with volume depletion. Dehydration is loss of just water. Volume depletion is loss of water and electrolytes. This patient needs just water, but this patient needs water and electrolytes. Next, let's take it to the next level. Let's say that I have tons of carbon dioxide in the blood. Carbon dioxide plus water equals carbonic acid. Oh, that's an acid. So increased protons in the serum means that someone has to buffer these excessive protons in the blood. Who's gonna buffer the excessive protons in the blood? Bicarbonate. The base will buffer the acid. So the base has to leave the cell, could be a red blood cell or any other cell by the way. Bicarb will leave. As bicarbonate leaves, it will neutralize and buffer the acidity in the blood. However, when a negative leave the cell, to maintain electro neutrality another negative gotta go inside the cell and this is mr chloride and that's why in most cases whenever you see increased bicarbonate in the plasma chloride will go down 
and vice versa. Cause medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. If you've watched my previous video on serum chloride, we talked about all the causes of hypochloremia and all the causes of hyperchloremia in the blood. With detailed explanation for each, please pause and review. If you need any help, please refer to the previous video in this lab's playlist. Medicosis, my patient is having hypochloremia, low chloride level in the blood. Is this due to sodium loss because chloride follows sodium? Or is this something hormonal like hyperaldosteronism? Well, to know the difference, order urine chloride level. If the chloride level in the urine is low, it's probably sodium loss, such as diuretics. But if there is tons of chloride in the urine, this means that chloride is following the acid into the urine. It's the titratable acidity. And what are the conditions that can lead to increased acidity of the urine? Those who dump the hydrogen ions into the urine, such as Kahn syndrome, which is primary hyperaldosteronism, and Cushing, which is hypercortisolism which has mineralocorticoid activity. It reabsorbs salt, but it dumps protons in the urine. Who's gonna follow the protons into the urine? Chloride, in the compound known as ammonium chloride. So you'll have lots of chloride in the urine. This is how you tell the difference between these two cases. There are two types of metabolic acidosis, high anion gap and normal anion gap. Also, there are two types of metabolic alkalosis, saline responsive or chloride responsive because saline is basically sodium chloride versus saline or chloride resistant. How can we tell the difference? Well, chloride level in the urine. If it's low, it's one of these, which means it's probably due to sodium loss, which means the patient is volume depleted, which means the patient will respond to normal saline administration. In these cases, it's usually hormonal imbalance. Urine chloride is high and this patient will not respond to normal saline. The patient will respond to correcting the underlying disease. If you want to learn more about metabolic alkalosis, download my acid-base imbalance course. And please watch my YouTube video on acetazolamide to understand the relationship between acetazolamide and chloride in the serum and the urine. What did loop diuretics do? They inhibited the 1-sodium, one 1-potassium, one 2-chloride channel, making me unable to reabsorb chloride back into the blood. All of that chloride will end up in the urine. I end up with hypo. Chloremia. How about thiazide diuretics? Well, they inhibited the sodium chloride channel, making me unable to reabsorb chloride back into the blood. Chloride will end up in the urine. Hypochloremia, except hydrochlorothiazide, which can lead to hyperchloremia because chloride is in the compound. Again, please do not forget, like father, like son. Pause and review. Some pearls for the pros. In the plasma, if I have metabolic alkalosis, more bicarbonate, less chloride in the plasma. If I have nagma, bicarbonate is down. Who's gonna take its place? Chloride, hyperchloremia. In hagma, the anion gap is high, but the serum chloride is normal. Because here, bicarbonate is low. Who's gonna take its place? It's not the chloride, it's the unmeasured anion. Maybe it's methanol, like formic acid particles. Maybe it's ethylene glycol metabolites. Maybe it's the uremia. Maybe it's the lactic acid. Another electrolyte is being added and therefore there is no need for chloride to change. Again, you can learn more about these two by referring to my playlist, Ever Wonder Why. Respiratory acidosis. This is my COPD patient. They developed hypochloremia because the more acid you have, the more protons. Bicarbonate's gotta leave the cell to buffer the acid, and chloride's gotta enter the cell, leaving less chloride in the blood. Respiratory alkalosis is the opposite. Who else is gonna teach you like this? Your woke professor with his PowerPoint? Give me a break. Next, chloride not in the serum but in the urine. What are the causes of increased chloride in the urine, i.e. hyperchloruria? Maybe you're eating too much salt. Salt is what? Sodium chloride. Oh, if you're eating too much salt, your kidney will try to get rid of all of that salt. So the kidney will increase the excretion of sodium and chloride in the urine. More chloride in the urine. What if my doofus doctor is giving me too much normal saline? The kidney will try to get rid of this sodium and chloride, increasing chloride in the urine. How about Addison disease? Well, the kidney is losing sodium and chloride because there is no aldosterone anymore. Dehydration, if I'm starving in the desert, do you think I am 
peeing, more or less, less of course, conservation of water. So the kidney will retain the water, reabsorb the water back into the body, producing a very concentrated urine. A very concentrated urine is full of electrolytes, just like chloride. Starvation, same idea, conservation. Loop and thiazide diuretics inhibit channels in the loop of Henle and the distal convoluted tubule respectively, making me unable to reabsorb chloride, so chloride will end up in the urine. How about causes of low chloride in the urine? What's the opposite of more salt intake? Less salt intake. What's the opposite of Addison disease? Cons and Cushing. In CHF, there is volume overload, probably because the kidney is reabsorbing more fluid, including sodium and chloride and water. So if the kidney is reabsorbing more chloride, less chloride will end up in the urine. But please understand that many patients with CHF are taking diuretics, which can lead to the opposite. You gotta think! Vomiting, GI suction, diarrhea, anything that makes me lose gastrointestinal fluid will make me lose chloride in the vomit or the diarrhea leaving less chloride in the blood, which means less chloride in the urine. Because where do you think the chloride in the urine comes from? From the chloride in the blood. It's called filtration. Hashtag GFR. Excessive sweating makes me lose salt in the sweat, which includes sodium and chloride. Less chloride in the body, less chloride in the blood, less chloride in the urine. If you want to learn more about metabolic acidosis, HAGMA versus NAGMA, and metabolic alkalosis, saline responsive versus saline resistant, if you want to learn about the base excess and the base deficit, the osmolar gap and the anion gap, download my acid-base imbalance course, the best on the planet, at metacosisperfectionalist.com. We talked about chloride today. If you want to learn more about sodium, how about potassium, magnesium, my beloved phosphate, etc., download my electrolyte course at metacosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Metacosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.